Hello, it's Andy from Snow Camp Shore up here with Paul from the Ski Instructor Academy in Capron, Austria, with another podcast. Hopefully the record button is pressed. If you watched last week, you will see that we've had a few issues with Paul Simpson's ability to press buttons to manage the studio. <laughs> in the absence of our studio editor. <laughs> Yes, it's true. It's true. I'm useless. Right, what we say we're going to talk about now? Oh, the summer, summer skiing. Yes. Now, actually, you probably haven't been out of the house because you're antisocial, but there is a lot of people here this weekend skiing. Now, when I say this weekend, mm-hmm. this is the 25th, 26th of May. So 27th I think of May. 27th of May. I think we've just had the Ski Golf World Cup thing where they have right. the ski and the golf. golf. Um, that's why they call it skiing, ski golf. Um, but they're just Hotel Tony is full of people skiing, the Eufor is full of people skiing, there's people walking around with skis in their hand. Yeah, and it's only 30 degrees. They're crazy. And I think the snow, <laughs> the snow must be absolutely dreadful because we've had a lot of rain as well. Yeah. Not, I've not actually looked, but that's not the summer skiing we're talking about, is it? No, well, actually, in contrast, Cerro Catedral, a sea in Argentina. What, they are skiing. What, what did you just say? Cerro Catedral. Oh. That's in Bariloche, on the sort of border of Chile. Mm-hmm. And they're skiing Monday to Friday. They opened up. I noticed about two weeks ago, I got something through saying, oh, we're going to open up because we've had um, snowfall. And I actually just looked at the live cam before you came. And yep, sure is enough. There they are, so skiing in May. How long is it until you're going? We are leaving on about the first week of July, but that's because I've got a lot of meetings. But the course starts on the 31st of July. And the reason it starts the 31st of July is for snow reliability, because it can often be still difficult in July. So this is extremely early for them to have snow? It is, really early. Yeah, absolutely. The earliest I've seen it was June where they opened up a lot in June. They do tend to, you know, you'll see, you see that in La Lenias and obviously Ushvaya and places that they can get open in June. Um, but yeah, Bariloche, not, not, not normally, so I'm, I'm surprised. So summer skiing is starting, as is our winter skiing finishing, and it's not quite finished, but I did look also at the webcam the other day on the Kitschstein Horn. It did look a bit drab. Mm, it looked like that point so. of year where you go, I'm not going to bother going up there for any summer skiing because it's going to be mm. slush and, well, not even slush, it's just actually watery slush because slush yeah. is fun. But um, I mean, that it, in, in other years, we have had powder dumps at this time in May. Yeah, it's but true. The, just the last couple of weeks have been pretty warm. Today warm. it's 26, 30 degrees out there. It's going to rain tomorrow and the next day, which... And it rained high up. That yeah, was the problem. Yeah. yeah. Whereas a few degrees cooler and it could have snowed, and then it would have been a huge powder dump yeah, of like two great, meters. Yeah. But that's not going to happen now. Um, so yes, so summer skiing is starting to open up. Um, from from our side, from the booking side, I see Argentina is booked um, crazily. It's I think it's about thirty five at the minute. Um, so coming off the back of COVID, that's really good. And it's still a lot of time, but you know, we're into May. We've still got a whole of June and July for people to book. Um, so that looks like a very strong course in Argentina and, um, New Zealand, not so much. It's, it's taken, it's been a bit slower with the bookings there. And I think a lot of that, when I was speaking again to people from New Zealand stuff, it's the insurity of the travel there still that, oh, that slowed people down. Haven't, haven't they only just opened up to yeah. outside travel? Yeah. Just, okay. and it, but it's a bit of a, it's a bit weird because it makes it sound like they haven't. And some people were getting confused going, oh, it's not going to open till, you know, I think it was like almost August the 1st. It's not, it's just certain countries it's still shut to. But okay, yeah. <laughs> most countries are not affected by that. And actually it is open. And to the point, because I was speaking to somebody yesterday who's just leaving New Zealand for the first time because they've been sort of like almost like trapped there. Um, so yeah, I think I think um, New Zealand, it, just to be clear in it, no, there aren't any restrictions. You can now travel in. So if you are considering booking with, with us, then yes, you can go to New Zealand. Equally, you can go to Argentina for your skiing. And as we've said many times before about the difference between skiing in the Northern Hemisphere on a glacier, let's say, compared with the Southern Hemisphere, you know, that chalk and cheese, like, you know, yeah. it's proper winter in the in the Southern Hemisphere. So you're going to get winter, you're going to get winter snow, dark nights, and, you know, it's, it's, it's the, real, the real thing, the real game down there. So, yeah, so we're looking forward to, at last, after two years away, getting yeah, it's back been a while, to... Isn't it? So, 35 people. Gary Tombas is going with you. 
Gary's going. Who you said is his birthday today? You said twenty seventh of May. Twenty seventh of May. Happy birthday again. That's twice we've said happy birthday, Tim. Yeah, but he only recorded or, or once. Did we, yeah, it didn't record that time. Okay, happy birthday, Gary. Yeah, it's for, episode by the for time three or four weeks earlier. <laughs> yeah, because this will be going out in three weeks. <laughs> um, and are you at hotels? Or are they? Are you, are you staying in uh, houses? What you're doing? No, no. We have a on that course on the Argentinian one. It's actually a five star hotel. They stay in. Mm, nice. um, it's a really nice uh, spa hotel um, with half board with a nice five star breakfast every day and, and nice meals and uh, yeah, steaks and red wine. And, and are they you know, doing Austrian qualification? We are still doing the Austrian qualification down there. We are considering opening up another qualification next season and doing two down there. So there is that option. Um, so yes, it's Austria, but generally most people going down there do it in English. Um, oh, okay. They don't bother doing like the German the add-on, German, yeah. um, unless they're going to work in, in, in Europe or in, in Austria in this, the winter. I find most people going to now into Argentina, either doing it as a bit of a gap year, yeah. or they're going to go Japan. off and go to Japan yeah. Yeah, when they come Makes back. Sense, so they're already qualified. Because when they come back, how long do they have before they can go to Japan? Not long. Well, they'll be back on September the 12th, 13th, uh, and three, then three months. Yeah, get their visa and, and get themselves off to Japan. I mean, Japan's obviously going to be, and I can see it's like heavily booked. I think it's way into heading towards 50 already for next season. Because the what we do with Japan, and we've said this before, is that we train here in Austria first, mm. and we'll do at least an exam here in Austria before going out to Japan because there is not snow and don't let people trick you to think the snow in Japan at that time of year in October, November. Um, so it's much better to, to train on real snow, we find, to give the yeah. full experience and the full depth of being a ski instructor and then go off to Japan. Um, hopefully in the next few weeks we'll get more and more information about how that's going to actually operate this year because it's, it's a little bit, still a little bit, they, well, they've, they've said they're open, haven't they? Or they're yeah, open. they're open. And, but, of course, like this year in Austria, Andy, a lot of ski schools and a lot of hotels and everything, we're all unsure about what yeah, they should do, how much minute. commitment should yeah. they put into it, how many instructors do they need. And then, actually, they found out it was just like a normal season and it was a mistake trying to shrink things down. Um, but, yeah, everybody's coming off the back of COVID and in, in, in still in panic mode, you know, and you mm. can expect that. Um, but... Will the monkeypox play a part? I know. Because we've now got monkeypox, haven't we? <laughs> Have we? I, I, I haven't got it, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. It, um, yeah, I don't, well, I do, from what I've heard, it's not It's not like COVID in the way it's going to wipe out <laughs> thousands of people. But um, what, what scares me is in the summer up at the restaurant, there's the two of us. And if one of us was to get it, you've got to isolate for 21 days. I know, 21 So that means we, we can't operate a restaurant for 21 days because yeah. either I'm not in the kitchen or the other guy's not from the house and you just can't do it on your own. Yeah. So it's a bit of, bit of a concern. Yeah. So I told him not to go around licking people's faces. Exactly. There's yes. the trick. Do not lick faces and you should yes. be all right with a monkey pox. Yeah. Aff Affen pox, as it's called here in <laughs> yes. Austria. Um, yeah, there's always going to be something, but um, at the minute, I'm really excited because at last summer skiing is back on. Because um, I'm not a great fan of summer. I, li I like a bit of spring and I like the autumn, but mm. summer, summer heat in Austria particularly is it's it's hot. Um, so escaping that in the early part of July, then I come back in September. It's great. You miss out all that kids holiday section and all that sort of stuff and we'll be skiing in in Bariloche so if you want to join us in Bariloche there are places we have camps out there and we run two two-week camps from the 31st of July to the 14th of August and another one from the 14th of August to the 28th of August and um, so there's also an opportunity for those just training for level threes and, and things or like that. just people who want to get better at skiing. Yeah. yeah we actually have a level three exam anyway so um that's something good as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenal place to, to, to go to. And, you know, obviously from a flight thing, it's, it's not as expensive. It's sort of one long haul flight. And then you just got a little hop, whereas sometimes going to New Zealand or Australia, you've got like quite either a super, super long flight or most people are taking a two long haul flights. And flights have just shot up. You know, I was trying to book a flight to Cape Town and I've been trying to book it for a month. I managed to book it yesterday, but the prices were crazy, you know, with this 
a combination of the war and then the lack of occupancy that they've got in, in on planes at the minute it's it's just been crazy the the way flights have been and of course when i look at things in the uk how the 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 um, airports are coping with the new demand. <laughs> it looks crazy it's back bonk, there. isn't it? The, yeah. the, apparently, like, Manchester is just like a war zone every time flights are coming in and out. <laughs> it's all sorts going on. It, 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 uh. And then some guy said in the telly this morning, I said, it shouldn't put people off from flying. It's like, yeah. who wants to go, like, sit in an airport for, like, hours on end well, in think, a queue? I think at the time <laughs> of recording, is it now half term in the UK? Because I yes, think today on right. Sky was like, this, this weekend is going to be a busy weekend. Will the airports cope? Huh? They've been, the airports have been running for years and years and years. Why aren't they coping now? Ah, well, it's you because know? they sacked all the staff, didn't well, they? For COVID. Stupidly. And then they can't, they can't get yeah. it back now. Yeah. So. But then, but then that's, that's exactly what's happened here in Austria with the gastronomy and with the tourism workers. Yeah. Not, not so much they got sacked, but a lot of them during COVID went back to their countries, whether that be Slovenia, Slovakia, Hungary, Hungary yeah. Czech. A lot of the tourism workers aren't from Austria. Like, obviously, we're not. Um... But they're not now coming back. Yeah. There's 35,000 gastronomy vacancies in Austria. Yeah. 35,000 shortage. And something yeah. like 100,000, I think it is, in tourism. Right. For a country that relies on tourism. It's crazy. <laughs> but this should, changing the subject slightly, give us more um, hope that the British ski teachers will be able to come back either this winter or next winter, with some kind of working um, work Visa. permit thing that is going to be mm. fast-tracked, get the people into jobs, don't drag it out until... I know some people that got them this, this winter, that, but they didn't come through till the middle of January, so they missed, they missed the start of the, the season. Right. Then got them in the middle of January to work the last half of the season. But they took a long time. But the, the talk is they're going to have like a fast track system that people will get issued them there and then yeah. go, go and work. Because I think, I think Switzerland will workers. be first to open up to the English. I think they'll be open by next season, certainly by January next year. Um, and we're actually going to be starting to operate a course down in Switzerland. So mainly because there'll be work there. Yeah. So it'll seem logical to do that. Um, but equally, I do think whether it be, uh, I don't know, Andy, whether it be next season for Austria or the season after, I think what Austria requires is a normal season without COVID, a normal season where they can see the necessity to have the English back, some reciprocal agreements where the Austrians are getting something out of it in the UK, mm -hmm. you know, which is hard with giant haystacks, you know. I don't know how that clown is still in. in <laughs> How is he still PM? How does he actually stay in power? Throws a good party. That's what it is. <laughs> Throws a good party and pays all your fans for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Do you know, but I, I, as much as uh, I detest him because of the whole Brexit thing and the Brexit lie, um, at the same time, you've got to admire a guy who can just balls it out and just go, yeah. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just staying where I am. What, 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 <laughs> My rules. Why should I resign? <laughs> yeah, get lost. I've just, I've just decorated the flat, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Another, another contentious little thing there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so maybe we have some good news for people and um, certainly from from our side i mean it would be quite weird from ski instructor academy say because obviously the, the the model and the philosophy behind ski instructor academy was always the first company ever who developed this model of bringing people in for six weeks getting them to level two and then sending them off to straight work. off to work yeah. and which we still do but of course the UK part can't and the interesting thing is of course because we had to shift our marketing philosophy mm -hmm. we now have so many more Europeans Irish yeah. Danish you know Dutch Belgium Germany coming in and then if suddenly it opens back up the English market it's going to be incredible because we're yeah. going to We'll like five, again. We're going to have like yeah. 500 people on a course, you know. Yeah. It'll be crazy. So um, it'll be, oh, it'd just be so good to see that that happen in the future that the, the UK can once again work here in, 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 in Austria. But at the minute, we will have to wait and see what that brings. But, I mean, we're going to do the comments next, but I did see there was one guy actually... Um, I can't remember who was. He did say something about the comments because he, Samuel, yeah, that was it. He, he, I think we were discussing what ski instructors do in summer. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, he said, well, you didn't really say, I thought you meant as work. 
I think we must have been talking about our training. Yeah, and we were like, talking about... Uh, I think we were. It's the end of the season. We're already starting to get ready for the start next of the next season. season. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I, I did answer Samuel and say, well, yes, I, I do know like a lot of um, ski instructors, they'll go into rafting, for example, mm. was one of the, the more favourite ends. Anything to do with tourism, really. A lot of people would go off and be away there or, you know... Yeah, the, one, the ones that stay in... The ones who stay in, in Austria that we know of definitely go into other, other sports coaching kind yeah. of stuff like rafting or climbing windsurfing um or other tourism roles yeah. i was i was a tour guide on a coach um until covid i now run a, a mountain hut mountain restaurant um which is kind of going back to what i used to do a long time ago i was in restaurants for 10 years um y- you do nothing um i go skiing in argentina oh so yeah you and do argentina. podcasts um M- marcus one of the trainers he also runs a mountain hut, restaurant yeah. hut um Gary skis. Yeah. I think, I think it's generally... It's tourist link, yes. isn't it? So, Samuel, what, what happens is, basically, where we're lucky, I suppose, we're in a glacier resort, so our ski instructors might be working even into April when a lot of other resorts are shut, and then ski instructors will try and have a holiday because like, there's a tiny period between them finishing on the ski slopes and having to start doing rafting or something else yep. rafting by law i think starts middle of may or something you're not allowed to go on the water till then so they might have a four-week gap where they'll shoot off to bali or you know somewhere weird and just try to have a bit of a holiday then they'll work through the summer doing as andy said and then there's that other period about the end of september where once again there's the mm. period of uh, you know six to eight weeks where those ski instructors have some time to themselves so it's almost like they group the holidays together into those periods yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's how it works but it, that, that that actually makes it sound like we have about eight weeks 10 weeks all day a year which we do however <laughs> however <laughs> do, yeah. on the months that we are working like my summer is now seven, seven days, days a week yeah. 12 to 16 hours probably a day and in the winter it's six days a week from early to okay mid late afternoon putting yeah. put in the uh, the app pray and they're going out with the clients as well it's a little bit longer but he classes that as work very, by the way which which is weird because jamie does the same to me you know it's got i'm working i'll go what are you doing i'm in paletti i'm in the bar yes but it's with the clients i'll go <laughs> you sound like do a I, grumpy old do ski I, do i need a, do i need to pay you for that <laughs> yes um so yeah we do have a lot of them two breaks, but there are disadvantages to them because they're in the low season. So when you do go on holiday, not everything's it's always cheap. open. Oh, it's cheap. So there's pros and cons. But yeah, the bits where we work, we work extremely hard, other than Paul. I think it's time to go. Like, subscribe, share it with your friends. And say that I talk too much. Bye for now. <laughs>